Okay. So, so I think like uh, this is this is a good good segue for for you guys, uh, you know, to understand, like you know what, like you know, you looked at this Arduino board, you created a small circuit. Uh, now, how many of you are actually thinking, okay, how does it tie into Cisco? I think like most of you must be thinking, right? I mean, okay, where does Cisco come in in play here, right? I mean, Arduino, Raspberry Pis, it's all about like maker, maker community, right? But and how how do I help my customers? So what we have done here is we've created a, a platform because we are DevNet and we want to show the power of APIs. We have actually created a tool for you to actually create a, 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 an IoT application. Okay, so what what this presentation is going to talk about is basically an IoT application. So let me just give me give you a, a brief overview about who I am. Uh, I consider myself uh, to be a maker. Uh, it's not only about like making things with like you know uh, what with a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino. Like I like to hack around a lot. Okay, so I I. I open up things, I like take them apart, I try try doing new things with that. And that's why it's I'm also a breaker. Okay, so I, I break things and see how I can fit fit them back. Okay. And the last thing is like one of the things that I like to do personally is I like to meditate. Uh, so you know that's how I get my energy. So uh, having said that, right? Uh, one of the things that you'll you'll see is that once I have uh, this Arduino board that you created, now the circuit that you guys worked on, basically it was uh, circuit six, which is taking a, a, a photo sensor and sh taking that, basically seeing whether it works or not, right? But I want to like take it to the next level, and let's say that I want to build an, an IoT application where. Uh, for my house, like every time, like the, the let's say the uh, the light goes low in a particular room, you want uh, a text message to be sent out to you, okay? Uh, using using Tropo, okay? So this is a Cisco service. Or I can uh, like if you think more uh, like you know in practical terms, it could be that you could actually have an earthquake. Uh, sensor like whatever circuit you built it could be an earthquake sensor and based on a trigger you want to take some action you want to send out uh, like a text message to all the people in the floor you want to send a spark message to maybe like everybody to all your employees and the third thing is i want to like have a siren go off right so very simple but these are the things kind of things that start tying up into uh, into IoT. Now, what Dev IoT is all about is helping you as a developer build this application with ease. So, if you if you think about okay, one of the things that what is unique about IoT, right? Uh, you'll realize that you can't you or your customer cannot come to Cisco and say, hey, you know, you I want a solution from Cisco al alone, okay? And the reason is that Cisco will never get into what you just did, like the Arduino boards. It's never going to build a sensor, OK? So P Cisco will work with partners or other vendors to actually build a sensor. So it's a multi-vendor solution. The second thing is that Cisco, we all know, is very strong in, in the infrastructure, right? Uh, so services uh, like, like Spark and Tropo, the routing, like data in motion, uh, CMX for location services, Meraki, same thing for location services. So you can actually use those services and build applications with them. The third one is like, you know, again, uh, applications, uh, the way Cisco actually sees it is applications are built at different layers, right? Uh, so you have uh, like, you know, the fog that is defined, there is an actual cloud, and then you have the real application. So there are multiple places where you got to go and program. And and finally, like think about it, right? I mean, if you you or your customer is building a a, a smart parking solution, okay? Now, in in a particular city, you're going to have like maybe a hundred thousand parking meters. Now, how do I test that in my lab, okay? Because I'm building a new application, I want to test it out. Uh, so basically, Dev IoT will help you actually do some uh, scaling and and load testing. So so that is that is that. 
Now, in terms of, again, this is Cisco's view of what IoT looks like, right? So at the, at the bottom layer, you have, have the things, uh, the sensors. Uh, then we have the edge devices, basically where most of the fog uh, networking is. And this is where, like, you know, you have the ISRs, the IR829s, uh, uh, 4000s, IE4000s. Uh, then, then comes the cloud layer where most of the data is going. And then finally, like, you have the end application where you actually build out a solution. So this is the Cisco view of IoT, okay? Now, what, what you see here is like what does an iot application consist of right uh, as i said like it's going to be of four things so if you start at the top level right what is the first thing is what is the business pain point that you're trying to get at right i mean let, let the example that i gave you before uh, an earthquake happens i want to basically send out alarms i want to notify my employees i want to tell my tiger team so that's the business pain point that I want to solve. So once I define that, then how do I enable it? Now, one of the things is like orchestration, where, like as I said, uh, take a sensor input, uh, do some action, and then uh, I mean do some policies and take some action. So basically, three things that need to be taken care of. Then comes the actual infrastructure that will implement it, and the last one is the things. So. For example, like the sirens that go in, or uh, like the LEDs that the, that go go on, or even the sensors. So this is like what an IoT application or a solution really is. Okay. Now, uh, some of the pain points that you'll see, right? Uh, like a lot of people in, in the first workshop, you guys said, uh, how how many of you said that this is the first time you are actually touching an Arduino board? There were, there were some of, a lot of people who did that, right? And now, let's say you want to go back home and you want to like do the same thing again. You want to try out something sim similar. So one of the biggest problems is how do I ar order a Raspberry Pi? Or how do I ar order my Arduino kit? Uh, I don't have it, but I want to start prototyping it easily. Okay, so that's one. Uh, the second is some people are actually scared of even touching a hardware. Okay, so like that's another thing that uh, this IDE will help you. The the next is like you know with Cisco IoT infrastructure, uh, there's a lot of question marks, right? I mean, hey, there are so many products. What are the right products for IoT? Uh, can I actually get some of them uh, to play with now? So because we are DevNet, a lot of these products are already in uh, our sandbox. So you can actually start playing with them and like testing out your application. And then finally, like you know, if you look at the enablement, how do I program the various components in uh, in the fog or maybe in the cloud, or how do I punt that data uh, to to a different layer? And then finally, as I said, like how do I simulate uh, various components? So if if these were the four uh, like you know pain points, what we did is we actually created Dev IoT, uh, and it is a very simple interface, uh, and it is free for everybody. Uh, you can actually go and try it out. I'll I'll give you the link for it. Uh, later on. Now, uh, one of the things that what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you uh, a demo, okay, and that will tell you like what what the different components are. So, but before before I go to the demo, like the four things that we talked about, right? The things. So, in the things, we have the real things where I could have a Raspberry Pi or like you know the actual sensors, refrigerators, lights, uh, like you know telepresence systems. And uh, if you guys are interested, you know from tomorrow onwards, we are going to have a Dev IoT booth uh, in the corner there, so I can show you some integrations with telepresence. So, in room control, like you know on the telepresence touch panel, you can say turn on the lights. Uh, so you could actually turn on the, the ceiling lights or bring the blinds down. So all those kind of applications can be turned on. And then there's virtual things. Now, what are virtual things? Uh, for example, like the, the button, I want to like, have a button to press uh, maybe start, start the motor or something like that. But I really don't have a motor. I don't have a button. How do I do it? So we have a virtual button that you can drag and drop in the IDE and start playing with it right so that's how you'll you'll go about doing it so that way like you know you can start prototyping very quickly so the other thing that i also want to make make sure that you get go is like you can take anything okay you can take any you can take your laptop you can take your pc you can take uh, something that that you want 
to be a sensor. Okay. So on this website, on the GitHub account, what we have done is we have download. We have actually provided an SDK, which what you can do is you can download it, and you can turn this laptop into a sensor. Okay. So for example, I can download the SDK. Uh, and if you want, I can show it to you live, okay, as we do it. So uh, we can download that SDK. We can use the CPU as a sensor, okay? And you can say, if the CPU utilization goes above 30%, send me a text message, okay? Or send a Spark notification. So in DevNet, uh, in our sandbox, what we have done is our, our uh, like sandbox folks, they have actually created these triggers where they say that if the sandbox is overutilized, then please notify the staff members uh, in a spark room, right? So now you're doing DevOps easily, right? You know, those kind of things can be start, you can start thinking of use cases as you, as you go. Uh, we, so far, what we have done is we have enabled like a lot of, pro uh, uh, a lot of Cisco projects that are already on this. So like data in motion is a fog, fog technology. Uh, CSA is also a fog technology. CMX, uh, I hope everybody knows what CMX is. Anybody, anybody not knowing CMX? Yeah. So CMX is basically a Wi-Fi location-based service. So what it can do is uh, like the Wi-Fi APs, you can use that to triangulate a, a, a device. And like, for example, like in a retail, sh retail store, what you could do is you could actually have like uh, how many people, how many, approximately how many people are there in the zone. And then you can write a trigger that says, if there are more than 20 people, then take some action, right? You know, those kind of things. So, so that Meraki, again, Meraki is uh, wireless access and they also have Bluetooth location services. They have uh, just location services, so you could actually use Meraki as well. Tropo is, Tropo is a text messaging service from Cisco, so you can actually use that to send text messages to your clients and we, I'll walk you through a demo. Uh, Spark, I'm sure like most of you are aware of what Cisco Spark is. Connected ceiling uh, is another application where we've, we've integrated Philips lights, we have integrated new new LEDs, uh, so you you can actually turn on and off like different lights uh, in a in a room, and then the telepresence touch ten touch pa panels, right? So I can have like turn on the lights or bring the blinds down or something like that. And then in the tools section, we also have a bunch of uh, uh, actions that we have, like you know simulators. Uh, we have HTTP connectors, uh, and I, I'll walk you through a demo. But this is like these are the tools that we have uh, in order to build your application. So so let's let's do this. Uh, so, so just 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 to give you a, a brief overview of what DevIoT is before we get to the demo is. Sorry, so this is this is a cloud platform today, okay? But it doesn't mean that it has to run in the cloud. We what we have done is we have actually like used like for example we have a customer a real customer like BMW for for example, they have used this on prem, okay? So their use case uh, is very simple. They they have some data coming out of their robots. I mean the the robotic arms. And they want to basically just look at the log files and send an error code into a Spark room. Okay, so very simple case, but their their constraint was that they do not want to send that data into the cloud because they didn't want that they wanted their data to be in house. So basically, uh, you can run it on prem as well as uh, in the cloud. And then we also have, so this is how like most of the sensors will register to Dev IoT. So the SDK that I gave, I talked about before, the, the SDK registers with Dev IoT using HTTP, but then on the data plane, if you think about as control plane and data plane, the data is sent over MQTT. So it's another protocol for IoT where a lot of it's real time protocol where you can send data on uh, using that. And then this is this is something that Cisco is actually going to like IOX. Most of the people probably know what IOX is, but there is a new platform that Cisco is actually going to release. Uh, it's it's the whole thing is going to be secure. So right from like you know 
taking a sense, uh, taking an 829 router, it will automatically provision it with zero touch, and you'll have data available right right on on top. So it's going to be a secure IoT platform, say a secure cloud. So it's all all connected. So let me at this point, uh, let me actually shift to a demo. So, so this is this goes back to what I said before, right? So, what we have done is we have actually like broken this down into four four different layers. Now, the things, the fog, the services, and the tools. Now, one of the things that I'm going to do now is let's say that I want to bring some of the sensors from my iPhone. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up an IoT the Dev IoT app, and I'm going to scan. Actually, I've already logged in, but let's see. So once I do this, too big. Let me try it on my laptop. Okay, so so what you see there is like those are the sensors that have started showing up from my iPhone now. Okay, now if I actually click on, uh, let's say, uh, flashlight. Okay, and if I try to test it, right? So basically, I'm going to turn it on. Is equal to true. And you'll see that the light is turned on, right? Now, the same thing, I can basically use it to turn off false. And I can turn it off, right? So what you have seen is that this is, uh, this is a sensor that we are using. And I'm controlling it from, uh, from, from an application that is in the cloud. Now, what just happened is if you go back to my presentation, right? So. Sorry. So what just happened here is when I actually scanned the, the QR code and I logged in, what happened is that, that my iPhone actually did an HTTP, HTTP, HTTP request. It registered the sensors, like four or five sensors over here and then it actually went and the data that is b b being sent is sent over mqtt and that's how you are basically getting getting the data so so what i want uh, so so that this is basically uh, that right so in the library what you will see is these are some of the sensors now if you want to tie in what you just did with with the uh, arduino board before right you can take the same arduino circuit that you built okay you can write, use the SDK that, that's there in the GitHub, and you can bring in that sensor, the light sensor, onto, onto Dev IoT. OK, and then you can actually say, if, if I, instead of like uh, when the light goes low, instead of taking a local action, you can say, uh, ring a bell or do whatever you want to do, right? So you can do those kind of things. So now, so this is basically like, uh, some of the services that I talked about before. This is Spark and Tropo, and these are the tools. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build a new project. OK, so uh, Cisco Live, and I choose one of the templates. So I just choose one template. And it gives me a blank, uh, blank template here. Now, what I'm going to do is 
let's let's build out that use case about the earthquake okay that we talked about before so my my uh, cell phone is going to be my earthquake sensor okay so as soon as i shake the phone uh, it's going to send out that uh, sensor information we'll write a policy and take a couple of actions one is that i want to send out a text message i want to send it in the spark room and the third one is uh, we said an alarm right so let's build out that use case so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually drag and drop my shake sensor. Okay, so I'm literally actually dragging and dropping my sensor. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop data in motion. Okay, and uh, just to make sure that everything works first, right? I'm going to just drag and drop a chart, and I'm going to like start the project, and at this point. Let's see if I actually see the data coming out. So I don't see the data. So there is something something not right here. But uh, at this point, I should have actually seen the data come out. But uh, we will see. We can debug it more. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go and drag and drop a Spark room. I'm, I'm, I, we can go and configure it. I'm also going to go and drag and drop Tropo. And at the same time, we said that I also want to send uh, something on my speaker, right? Uh, the speaker. So, so I, d I basically like have created this. Let me just tidy it up a little bit. So it, it created this. Now I'm going to configure my Spark Room. Okay, so. Here, when I click on it, I can actually say, this is my Spark Room. Uh, it, it says, like, choose one of the, the Spark Rooms that you want to choose, because these are all the Spark Rooms that I am associated with. Uh, so for now, I'm just going to use uh, this. Some, some, and then I can actually put a text message that goes with it, Okay, whatever that, that value. So I've configured Spark. The same thing I can do is with Tropo. OK, so Tropo, I can add a text message that says what number you want the text message to go out to. And the same thing, what is the text message that you want to like actually want to send. So I've configured this Tropo and this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a policy. OK, now in the policy, I'm going to say that if the shake sensor value right, is basically true, Right. What I want to do is I want to actually send out a Spark notification. The next thing I want to do is same thing. Like people who are familiar with IFTTT, uh, this is something similar, uh, but for Cisco products. Okay. And then I can say Tropo, do this. And the third policy is if this, then I also want to send it to the speaker and play the sound of the police for now okay so i basically created like three policies at this point okay and i'm going to say okay so at this point like we've created this now i'm going to like do the shake sensor so for some reason i'm seeing that it's either a delayed or whatever but we'll see whether it works But at this point, what I want you to do is actually now you can actually go, if you have your laptops, PCs, you can pull out your laptops and go to uh, deviotsandbox.cisco.com. So this is a place where you can actually start prototyping now. Okay, So you can just play, play around and see if you want to like build out your own application. So any questions so far? I mean, you know, like, do you, yeah. Phone, yes. Not all, yeah. For those four sensors or five sensors that we are, yes. Yeah. 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 You're right, but see, think about it this way, right? This is not like something that you are going to use. This is a prototyping tool, 
right? Uh, the other thing is like when you when you do that, that key is your key. Okay, so when the key yes. Yeah, that's that's correct. But the reason it is like that is because it's prototyping. Okay, so we have a security token also associated. But if you look at this, right? So if you look at the the library, and create new, you'll see that there is a, there is an option where we can actually generate a security token. Okay, so now in my application, I can use that security token, and only if I'm validated then only I can pair up with this phone, right? So, but again, for ease of use, we want to actually make it simple for people to start playing with it, right? Uh, that's the idea. So, uh, how many of you are going to try it out? Uh, so uh, you have to basically, like, if you, if you go back to, uh, once you go to this website, uh, I'm going to log out. So you'll probably be at, at this page, right? So deviotsandbox.cisco.com. And once you hit here, use, use this Cisco DevNet uh, logo here. OK, down here. So there you can use your CCO account. Or like for Cisco folks, you can use your CEC ID. But you can use your CCO account to log in. Yeah. No, if you click on DevNet, click on DevNet here, the, the icon at the bottom. Yep. So some of the things that you can actually try out over here are like in the library, you'll see that there is there is a button. Okay, so you can actually use the button to actually like turn on and off something. That's a virtual virtual button. Or what you can do is actually have a simulator. So like if I if I go back to the project and I can bring in a simulator. And the simulator is is generating a value, a random value right now. Okay, so you can actually write. Uh, so if you see this, this is the random value that is actually coming in from from the simulator. Yeah. So so for people who have an iPhone, uh, please go to the general settings. You can use Android. Yeah. So go to general uh, settings and device management, and just trust. Yeah. No, no, no. You you have to scan that. Uh, so if you go on that link where the library is, so if you go go back, so here, what you want to do is go to this link, HTTP. That's the that's the place where you download the app.
No, no, that QR code is for, for mine. Yeah, right. So that's that's the thing that he was asking, right? So he, he, no, now you have to click on this. Yeah, so, so this is yours. No, no. So did uh, you download the app? No. Yeah, so go to this link first. Yes. Yeah, no problem. Where do I have to go? Okay. Okay, so go back to Cisco uh, Sandbox. I mean, uh, s a DevNet Sandbox, Dev IoT. No, go, to, go on top. No, no, just go on the. Yeah, so type in Dev IoT Sandbox, the whole whole thing. Dev IoT. Sandbox. Dot Cisco. Dot com. I think it's HTTP. Just make sure. It's not HTTPS. Try it in a different window. <laughs> Is it working for you? Yeah, so Dev IoT Sandbox. No, no, no. Did you click on that? No, click on that. Yeah, first, no, no, from your iPhone, like, go to that link. Yeah, bit.do. Yeah, uh, device management. Trust, trust. So now you can scan your own code. OK. So now if you <laughs> refresh, uh, your sensors will start showing up. So if you refresh the page. Yeah, you can first try your light, whether it's really working or not, right? The flashlight. Yeah, flashlight. Test it. Like, click on that. So what you can also do is like drag and drop, uh, like Spark. Configure your Spark room, and write a rule to like send out a text message into your Spark room. Okay, so so one one more thing, like you know, for people who are signing up with DevNet, it takes a couple of minutes because of the delays uh, across, right? So. It stops. Yeah. Yeah, and now go back to your home. Uh, it's downloaded somewhere. Can you see in your apps? Dev IoT.
into dev IoT. So you already signed in now? Yeah. So 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 use use. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. So and then like. Thank you. So let's. So like here, like you can actually uh, QR code. Already, I in did you install the app? No, no, no. You got to go to this link. Go to this link. Bit dot do. It's an iPhone. Yes, yeah. IPhone. You can try. Go to this link. <laughs> Flashlight. Okay. Okay, and then then write your uh, rule. So how many how many people have Androids here? So and w were you able to download or no? Only were you able to download the app? Uh, uh, QR code. But that is but do you have did you have any problems downloading the app itself? Yeah. Third party? Yeah. Yeah, I think like on your phone, there is a setting that says uh, allow apps to be installed from third party. So that's why it's not installing. No, PC it won't work. PC it won't work. No, it won't because there is a check. Yeah, no, it's the same link. It's the same link. Same link, it will download uh, for Android. So you got to bring in like a connector. So go back to, yeah, and then go to the fog layer and uh, uh, drag and drop, let's say, DMO. Yeah. And then you can actually write your policy in there. Yeah, you see, like while it was shaking, it was one. Now you stopped, it's become zero again. Say that again. On on the iPhone, yes, because because it's not on the App Store. So what you have to do is go to the general settings. Device management. No, no, down. It was there. Yep, and then trust it. Yeah, trust. Yeah. Now huh? Now I can see everything on your phone. <laughs> no, not yet. 
I think everybody likes it. in the downloaded files. Now go to the downloads, dev IoT. Now go to the downloads, I think click on the downloads. That I don't know, for, for Android. So how many of you were successful in building your first IoT application? Beautiful. A test room? Yeah, just say hello. That's it. That's okay. So, so who's who's ready to build build a new new sensor on your uh, like your CPU utilization or something like that? You want to do it? So, do you have Python installed on? I mean, I think for the people who have Macs, I think it's okay. But for uh, people who are on Windows, uh, you might want to like see if you have Python or download Python. Okay, so just so so what what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you like you know, and then I'll give you the link how to download it, but. The, the, the link that I told you before, right? I talked about like the GitHub and what what the GitHub is all about. So if you look at look at the gateways, this is this is the Python SDK. Now one of one of the things that you'll see here is what this SDK does is it allows you to actually define a gateway. Okay? If you want me to wait for like a couple of minutes, I can wait, you know, and then we can start. So, sorry. Okay.
Okay. Yeah. Just use one. Yeah, Vim. That's fine. Python. Okay. Yeah, submit. Just choose one, yep. Yeah. All right. You are a new developer. <laughs> so I, I, here, if you go to dev IoT, no, go, go back here and type in dev IoT. Sandbox. Dot Cisco. Dot com. Yep. You know, I I think it's not HTTPS. Hold on. Okay. Uh, do this. Okay. So. Yeah, library and then create. No, no, library. Click on library and then add and scan QR code. So you can scan your QR code. Scan. Oh, same problem? Okay, wha did you try this? Just enter. Uh, You don't need to do anything. Uh, put put this IP, the that IP, the Dev IoT sandbox. Yes. HTTP Dev IoT sandbox dot Cisco dot com. Dot Cisco dot com. Yep. Same thing. Dev IoT sandbox. Okay, so so let's let's continue looking at the GitHub. Okay, so for people who want to like go ahead and like you know build their own sensor, uh, so if you go to the GitHub, uh, like you know what I told you before, like it's going back to GitHub DevNet Dev IoT, and what you will see here is you'll have a gateway Python SDK. Okay, and if you if you have a Raspberry Pi at home already, like you know, what you could do is actually just look at this Raspberry Pi starter kit. Uh, we have a lot of information, like you know, how you can actually wire it up. Uh, like you know, uh, what you can also do is w what you need to buy in terms of like a Grove Grove kit and stuff like that. Uh, so we have some information about that, so you can actually use that to like create your uh, Raspberry Pi image. Okay, that works directly with uh, Dev IoT. So, once you have that, uh, this is the basic SDK, and in the SDK there are base four four parts. Okay, the first first part is to do with registering of a gateway. So, whatever, like let's say that you want to take your Raspberry Pi, and the sensors behind that. Are, are something that you want to bring on Dev IoT or the the Arduino board that you you had before, right? What you want to do is define a gateway, and this is the gateway name that you have to give. This is the IP address, and this is what the IP address is. What uh, Cisco sand, Dev IoT Sandbox Cisco .com is something that you can use, uh, and then this is this is the control plane, this is the data plane, and this is the the email address that you want that account to go with. So you, you can use that. And then what are the sensors behind that uh, 
gateway. So in, in our case, like if you, for people who have used the iPhone, like we created this iPhone gateway and in there we have registered like four or five different sensors. So there we have the flash sensor, we have the speaker sensor. So we create this using like app register, uh, like uh, whatever, right? So, so once you register that, uh, there are two things that you need to do. The first one is to do with like, uh, like an action that you want to take. So like when somebody says turn on uh, the flashlight, right? So there is a callback that needs to be programmed and then you basically say, yeah, in the callback, uh, what do you want to do? And then the, f the second one is like I'm reading a sensor value, like, you know, what you were doing for uh, with, the with the Arduino, you are reading the sensor value, the light sensor, you can use that value and set that value to the value that you got from the actual uh, Arduino and send that to DevIoT. So if you, once you say set value, it will start showing up on DevIoT. Okay, so basically like there are four of these commands. Uh, define a gateway, uh, second is define a sensor, third is set a value, and fourth is like get a value. So once you have that, like you are ready to begin building your own sensor. So, so what I did here is like I have created so I have created a, a very simple uh, are you guys able to see this? Is it okay? Yeah. So, so what I've done here is like I use that I downloaded that SDK, and once I downloaded that SDK, what I've done is I've created a gateway called the gateway name, and then I'm I'm connecting it to Dev IoT Sandbox and IoT Eclipse. I mean, I, you can use whichever MQTT server. I can actually go to the same server also, and then one of what I'm doing is I want to register the CPU of my Mac as a sensor. So what I did is the CPU and uh, I'm not using the LED, and w here in this, in this process, what you'll see is this is, a, this is a while loop where I am reading the value of the CPU on my Mac, and I'm sending that value, set value of the CPU, because it's a percentage value, I'm sending it, multiplying it by 100 and sending it to, uh, to, Dev, uh, to Dev IoT. So if I run this, program right python cpu dot pi it's going to ask me for uh, my email and so so what you see here is like this is the cpu utilization of my mac right now okay and if i go back to dev iot So what you see here is this is my sensor should have, I mean, it starts showing up. And this is the value of the sensor that's coming from, from my CPU right now. Now, if I want to write a, a project with that, right, what I can do is I can actually go back over here. And now I can drag the new CPU and write a new policy that says that if the CPU value is greater than uh, maybe 50%. I want to basically send out a, a, a text message or a Spark message. So at this point, I've basically programmed my CPU uh, as a sensor, and I've created a policy and and done things. Now, like I mean, does this does this make sense, right? I mean, you want to like start looking at you can start thinking of the type of sensors that you can actually build uh, like using these kind of things, right? I mean, think about it, like last year, like, uh, or a couple of months back, uh, we were at another trade show and like one of the partners came, he's a furniture manufacturing company. Uh, so what they said is like, we want to enable that every time somebody sits on a chair, they want to know the occupancy or something, something like that, right? So. Uh, you can actually have that Raspberry Pi that sits, and each chair is basically having a sensor that detects whether the uh, thing is there or not. And then you, you can actually write applications using these kind of things. 
So that's the power of, of this, right? Now, one of the things that, uh, like, you know, you might wonder is where is the fog layer over here? Okay, because now this was all cloud, right? I mean, you, we are actually hosting it in the cloud. The fog that we have here is a virtual fog that we have actually hosted in our sandbox. Okay, and that's the reason you don't see it. But in real world, I mean, think about it this way, right? Uh, let's say that these tube lights are all, let's say, IP, IP enabled tube lights, let's say, right? Uh, you want to take the sensor that you built, uh, like, let's say, using Arduino. Okay, and what you want to do is if the light in this session, I mean, in this uh, uh, section becomes less, you want to turn on the lights, right? I mean, that's the application that you want to have. Now, what you could do is have an A29 router, okay? So you actually can sell or like you can buy that A29 router from Cisco and program a, a policy, okay? And one of the things that I haven't shown you yet okay is this is the power of like what what you can see here right so you you wrote this policy but when i click on this it's actually showing me the actual policy that will be sent to the device okay so this is this is something very powerful right i mean we all like you know cisco has always been using clis and stuff like that now we have generated the policy now you can actually take this policy as is cut and paste, and you can actually put it in, in a data in motion or a 829 router. OK, so that's something that is very powerful. The same thing, like if you, if you click on like Spark, and like let's say you are building a new Spark application. So this is the API that actually we are using to send out uh, the Spark message. OK, so this is something that like, you know, one of the things is that it's not just about whether you are building the application, but you also want to help, like, you know, understand what's behind the application that is being built. So any questions uh, so far? So anybody wants to try the CPU.py on their, uh, OK, so let's, let's, let me show you. So. So if you go to GitHub, uh, I haven't I haven't published it on. De uh, I'll I'll give you the link. So. If you go to github.com slash a malegaonkar, okay, I'm just going to like type it in. So if you go to this link, And once you're on that link, hit the dev IoT repository. So go to the repositories, and there is a dev IoT repository. And once I hit that, there is the cpu.py which you can actually download. Uh oh. Yeah, the CPU.py. So, so once you're able to get it. 
So, so for, for the CPU.py, uh, edit it using your favorite editor like VI or Note, whatever you, you are comfortable with, Eclipse. Correct. I mean, because they are, they know what what they want to collect, right, from the from the device. We we are in the process. Uh, it's not formulated yet, but uh, like our our senior VP uh, Rowan, uh, who's actually like uh, IoT uh, head. Uh, so he's actually wanting to actually do this partner program where we actually do the best practices or like you know those kind of things bring them either on devnet show them how to do it so those are the things that we are looking at We, that's that's how we actually did the the spark uh, with BMW. Okay, so uh, they they saw it and now uh, like somebody else is actually building the real project. So yeah, so for people who have CPU dot uh, you can edit. Oh yeah, so if you go here, uh, find find a place where there is gateway, and uh, replace it with. Uh, replace the 10 dot or whatever the IP address is with uh, dev, dev, dev IOT sandbox .cisco com. Yeah, instead of the VM. Yeah. Were you able to get it? Yeah, replace this 52. Yeah, download that download that file. So on the top right, you can see the download. Oh, yeah, sorry. So once you once people who have modified it already just one sorry yeah so like we are we are it so you have a different uh, so you can remove print you can remove the prints all all the prints just hash just hash them comment them out sorry because it's a different version of python that you have yeah it's it's not producing a product right what it is producing is an application right uh, and then the application is actually tested out uh, so one of the things which i did not talk about is you can actually send your data into, let's say, an Amazon cloud or a Salesforce cloud or whatever, right? So you could actually build out your whole application in the cloud f using using this, and then replace everything that you have with like the actual products. So it's kind of like it's not like a product that is coming out of it, but it's a solution prototype that you've done. But then the actual application is real. Uh, the IoT SP, uh, the one that I talked about, IoT DC, uh, that's that's the cloud that Cisco hasn't announced yet, but uh, I can't speak much. But yeah, so it's there, it's coming.
correct yes yes bless you okay so so for people who have already like uh, modified this just run the the cpu.py with python cpu.py something similar to this what i'm doing python cpu.py now some of some of you will have uh, like you know when you do when you run this command uh, it's saying print parenthesis missing or something like that that's probably because you are do, uh, having a different version of python uh, so either you can comment it out or you can like just delete uh, that print command Are you able to get it? Okay. Yeah. So so let's do this. Uh, go back. Uh, go back to the GitHub. So okay. So sorry. Sorry, we missed. We missed one step here. Okay. So if you go back, if you go back to this this repository, right? uh it's actually like what what we did not download is the actual sdk okay so people do like don't have the sdk with you right now the dev iot sdk and the re that's the reason it's not going to work so what what you need to do is actually download the sdk go so the link that you see here in the environment the sdk click on that link and basically clone or download this so download it as zip or like whatever you want like you can just download that whole sdk and then yeah you're able to run it not able to Yes. Yeah, so you need one more package. Okay. Can you uh, control C, control Z? Yeah, to launch the Python. Python. So it, Python? Yeah, yeah, quit. Just quit out of it. Yeah, quit. Exit, yeah, quit. I think quit function. Control Z. yeah so so on the command prompt you have to do python and the the, the cpu dot py but yes no any anyway, in the same directory so once you download the sdk were you able to get it oh yeah yeah let me give you that uh, which one is that uh, cpu get cpu percent yeah so you can actually do a, can you do a google google search i forgot what what the actual package is get cpu percent uh, python yeah ps util Can you do pip install psutil? Oh, I have the app. Yeah, it's, it's installed. Uh, yeah, it's already, it's already there. Weird. He's got flame as well. Get CPU. Weird, because all the other, all the other attributes are fine. I can't make the eyes. Yeah, but then. Yeah, uh, yeah but. Yeah, 
this line to import OS. Yeah, you downloaded the IoT, right? Dev IoT? Did you download the SDK? No, I yeah, so if you go back to here, no, where is the GitHub? Yeah, click, go down. Uh, go, go up, go up, up. And download, download this SDK. Yeah, click, yeah. Download zip. Yeah, so click, uh, double click on that. And where is your CPU.py? No, oh, sorry, go back. Yeah. So where is your CPU.py? Yeah. Can you copy it in this directory? No, no, one more. Yeah. Uh, that's it. And then run, now go back there. Oh, can you go to that directory itself? I don't know whether that, that works. So go to that directory. CPU.py. Oh, yeah, yeah, OK, yeah, yeah. No, why don't you CD into that directory? Go go to that path. That's what I say. Okay. Now now try the same command. Python script tab. Oh, did you copy and paste? Yeah. yeah, so Python is very sensitive to like tabs. Okay, so if you if you don't just download it as is. It's already downloaded the, the one. Yeah. No, no, no. So so I, so basically like you know we are we are at the end of like uh, this workshop for dev iot okay so for people who are who have completed it uh, like you know awesome job and if you have any questions uh, like you know i'll be here uh, all the 3 days 4 days so definitely stop by uh, in the devnet zone and like you know talk talk to us and if you have any customer use cases or anything like that, uh, I'll be more than happy to, like, you know, help.
Thank you. So, so hope this was useful for everybody. Thank you. S say that again. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Actually. Oh yeah, yeah. So actually, like it's even uh, like af you know. I think does everybody have uh, like do we have their email addresses or something like that? I I have my business card. I can give it to you after. Uh, so the thing is like you know one of the things is like if you go to uh, right now it's not working but I'll I'll make it up but if you go to cs.co/cisco-dev-iot right this is this is the actual project page where you can actually see uh, like some of the things that are that are happening okay for dev iot and then this try demo okay one of the problems right now is it's going to the wrong link which I'm, I'll fix yeah but if you if you click on this it it's supposed to go to uh see this one like all you have to do is remove this 9000 and you'll you'll actually be in in this okay so this 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 version is even more powerful okay and the reason this is more powerful is you also have spark triggers okay so you can actually create a spark room and interact over here right you can say uh like you know so if i click on this i mean I'll, i can just give you an example so i can drag and drop the spark trigger okay and what you could do here is you you can all you have to do is in a spark room you have to just talk yeah basically like include have a chat with this spark bot okay so if you want i can just show you okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to search for this dev iot bot okay now once i click on the dev iot bot i can actually like interact with it so if you if you look at this it said if you want to talk to this bot you basically type in this and the message okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say this and let's say message is on okay now what i can do is i can send this message to the bot and sorry let me just remove this okay so what you will see here is now i can actually write a policy that says that if the spark trigger message contains on then i want to basically send out something right i mean i can i want to turn on the lights so using a spark room you can start like interacting with your network now okay so this is even more powerful I, the reason i did not show it is because the broken link but you can actually start using that also so that's something that you want to start uh, looking at You can search for actually dev IoT here. So you you'll be able to hit this project, and once you hit this project, you're at the same same place where you are, and then try demo will get you into 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 here. Yes, yes. No, so so for example, if you are if your use case really doesn't is looking for only sensor data, writing a policy and triggering like let's say a spark room or, or something like that, you technically just can use this on a UCS machine. Okay, so you can actually sell this as a UCS app uh, to your customer.
uh, you, you have to no it's the application is there right so all you have to do is basically like uh, again we can package it for you so like for example the the use case for bmw we actually did uh, package it for them so that's what we did No, the, Awesome. Thank you, guys.